This channel is for rewilding. We love the idea of restoring large areas for nature, reintroducing creatures like the beaver, the bison, and even the wolf. But how would you feel about this fella or about this guy coming back to Britain? We're gonna look at whether if these and other natively extinct animals could make it in the UK today. Understanding their ecology, the environment, and how they lived, why they're no longer here. Considering vast ecological timescales and how these animals evolved and lived through them, or indeed, are still living through them. And ultimately, by contrast, we'll look at the rapid impacts that humans can have in a relatively short amount of time. To really drive these points home, let's get started with the creature that's in the spotlight at the minute here in Britain, and that is the lynx. The lynx went extinct in Britain around 1300 years ago. It would have been an apex predator, hunting land mammals and birds of different shapes and sizes. It's secretive, predominantly a woodland specialist that hunts by stalking and ambushing its prey. It's about the size of a Labrador, a very cat-like Labrador, and I just love the little tufts on the tops of its ears. Populations across mainland Europe have been increasing thanks to decades of the rewilding movement. Reintroductions and new laws have been supporting the lynx like never before, with many countries now respecting and understanding their role within a balanced ecosystem. Seeing the lynx as an asset and putting them at the heart of nature-based businesses that generate millions every year. So why did the lynx go extinct in the UK? Well, the short answer is people either directly through hunting or indirectly through habitat destruction, with the lynx either being seen as a nuisance that killed livestock or a trophy kill during hunting. So can or even should the lynx make a comeback to the UK? Well, yes, it certainly can happen and wildlife enthusiasts will tell you, well, they'll say, why isn't it happening if there's been such great success between lynx and people already in Europe? Enough suitable habitat and prey has been identified here in the UK. So it does make you think, why isn't it happening? Before any reintroduction, you have to of course have answers to the following question, which is, are the reasons for extinction still there? Because if they are, then there's no point in reintroducing that species. And in the case of the lynx, I would say ever so slightly, although perceptions have been changing a lot over the past 20, 30, 50 years. The main point of conflict, and rightly so, is from landowners, particularly livestock farmers. If these concerns are addressed with proper mitigation, a lynx reintroduction, and all of its benefits could be right around the corner for the UK. Whew. All right, you're up north in the far reaches of Scotland and out of nowhere you hear this great crashing and thundering sound of a tree coming down. You hear this exhaling of air that sounds like it's coming from a long rubbery tube. <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, woolly mammoths. They went extinct in the UK around 10,000 years ago and evidence shows that they would have been found across the UK. They were about the size of African elephants, except of course, they're covered in a dense fur coat and would have favored tundra conditions and grasslands. So a couple of fossil hunters known as Sally and Neville Hollingsworth, I just love their names, they're just such British names, they found five mammoths in the Cotswolds last year dated to be around 200,000 years old. Sadly, woolly mammoths are not alive today, anywhere on earth. Although humans would have lived at the same time as mammoths and they would have hunted them, man is not the reason for their extinction it was climate change that got the mammoths. The melting of ice and increased rainfall meant that their main food sources were wiped out. So the first question to ask is, isn't should we bring woolly mammoths back to the UK, but can we? There are organizations that want to and believe they'll be able to bring the mammoth back. Well, it actually won't be a woolly mammoth. They can't just like create woolly mammoths. It will be a, ge a genetically engineered version of the African elephant. It'll be fluffy and it'll be able to survive in tundra arctic conditions. As crazy as this sounds, this is possible and it's also very exciting because it will do a lot of good to the degraded arctic landscapes. But how about the UK? Could woolly mammoths, if they ever came back, could they survive here in the UK? Well, the answer is sadly no. We just don't have the right conditions for, for woolly mammoths. The closest place that you would get is in the further reaches of Scotland in the Cairngorms. This next species would have lived alongside woolly mammoths here in Britain, and they certainly would have given humans a thing or two to think about. Cave lions. They lived in the UK up until 14,000 years ago. These would have been much bigger than the lions that we see in Africa today, and their bite would have had twice the strength. 
weighing around 40 stone, which is about 250 kilograms, they were the very definition of apex predators, hunting the woolly mammoth and other large herbivores of its time. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, depending on who you are, um, cave lions aren't alive today. But the real cause for their extinction is debated. Like the woolly mammoth, a changing climate, a warming climate, would have certainly have affected cave lions. But evidence shows that cave lions declined around the same time that humans were making advancements across the landscape. So would cave lions, if they still existed or if they were genetically engineered, imagine that, genetically engineered apex predators, would they make it in the UK today? Well, I mean, there's certainly enough food for them. The habitat would probably work for them. They're not going to be too fussy. But I mean, if we're stalling or reintroducing a cuddly little lynx, how do you think a cave lion would go down? All right, so while we're on big scary predators, uh, this next one will definitely give Benny the Cockapoo a thing or two to think about in the local park. And I'm talking crocodiles. Yep, the world's largest reptilian lived in the UK around 120,000 years ago during a warm interglacial period. And it was a changing climate that drove the crocs out of Britain as they rely on warmer waters to incubate their eggs. So, shall we reintroduce crocs to the UK? Well, sadly no, our waters just aren't warm enough for them, but potentially with rising sea levels and a warming climate, crocs just might make it back to the UK. All right, okay, crocodiles was a little bit of a wild card, Let's bring it back to a creature that is surviving and indeed thriving in many parts of the world. The wolf went extinct in the UK around 400 years ago, which by comparison to the other species so far is extremely recent. Wolves live in packs and they have strong family dynamics. They predate herbivores and they can live in a range of different habitats. Wolves have been villainized in recent human history and this led to their extinction in Britain and very nearly across Europe and America. Globally, populations are growing thanks to modern ecological understanding of a wolf's role in the ecosystem. Wolves have been afforded greater protections and their presence has been encouraged through reintroductions. However, reintroducing wolves to the UK, much like the lynx, is a hotly debated topic. And much like the lynx, the reasons for extinction are still in place. And I think with the wolf, they're there just a little bit more. Whether if it's due to their misrepresentation as a baddie, or maybe it's because they've got sharp teeth and they work in packs, wolves are feared not just by livestock farmers, but by many people. And until people can understand and most importantly experience wolves and other apex predators, their return to the UK is just gonna have to wait. Leading on naturally from the wolf, we have the brown bear. The last bear was killed around a thousand years ago in Britain, and yes, you guessed it, it was due to humans. Relentless persecution and the reduction of forests just meant that bears couldn't survive. But thankfully we know that the brown bear is alive today and in countries such as Romania in Europe, they're actually thriving. But if the bear was to be reintroduced to the UK, how do you think it would go down? What kind of reception do you think the bear would get? Where would it go? Well, it would go to the further reaches in Scotland again. This is the place where you would reintroduce most apex predators purely because it's got a low population density. That's referring to humans and it's also as wild and as big as it gets here in the UK. You'll notice that many of these huge timescales that have been thrown up of when these animals went extinct far extend the lifetimes of humans. 200 years, 400 years, 600, 1,000, 100,000 years. Very large timescales. And it's these timescales which I think that humans struggle to comprehend because we live within the bubble of our own lives. But let's just try and think about what 200 years passing is like. I mean, that's a bloody long time. But ecologically and evolutionary, that's just a blink of an eye. That's a shudder in time. Not much can happen. It's not enough time for the climate to naturally shift that leads to some of these extinctions. But when you consider the lifetime of a human, 100 years, 80 years, 50 years, 25 years, even a decade, that's enough time for a human to have their imprint to the planet. The scale and rate of change that man has to the natural world is staggering, terrifying, but it's also reassuring. It's reassuring to know that if the right decisions are made, we can move towards a better planet for all life. Just as quickly as things can be changed for the worse, they can be changed for the better. Subscribe if you're interested in wildlife and if you're even more curious, join us over on Patreon. YouTube reckons that you wanna watch this video next, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Leave curious.
By the way, it feels really good to be back. Um, I had a baby, I had a newborn baby recently, so it's meant that I've been a little bit out of action, but I'm back.